everyone, it's Rosanna, and I am in my art room this morning. It's a sunny September morning, um, and my art room is very, very messy because I am getting ready for um, an art sale, my first art sale of the year, possibly my only art sale of the year. So it will be little mice, there will be a few little pumpkin mice but the rest will be mostly just dressed characters and kind of my focus, I didn't mean this to happen, but I started making little pull toys and so I, <laughs> a lot of these little mice are going to have toys of some sort, um, maybe dollies and we'll see, but I'm just going to make today and chat with you a little bit, be more like a vlog style video and because um, some of you have requested that and so we're just going to get making. Okay, I thought I would do a voiceover and then I was like, ugh. Doing voiceover sometimes puts me off of actually editing a video because I dread doing the voiceover. So I'm going to record um, as I go and we'll see if I end up being able to actually talk about anything besides what I'm actually doing. Um, or have any train of thought at all without just sidetracking myself and interrupting. Um, I'm making a bunch of little dressed mice and I just had um, some little bits in the oven her bow um, I'm going off of this photo um, it's like this lady okay I have shared a few videos this is the one if if you've watched some of my other videos this is one where it was called um, like look what was left be or left behind look what I found in an old house or in the attic of an old house something like that um I think I've done it was almost a few years ago anyway this is like the mother or the matriarch of that family when she was a little girl in like the early 1910s I think or maybe it was the 1900s like I don't know I think she was like um born around the turn of the century I have all so much of their family stuff so that's her um, and then, cause this looks very Edwardian to me. Um, and then that's her daughter, Diana, I think is her firstborn. Um, anyways, it's crazy to me because I have so much more of this family's stuff than I, and really in a way more of their story than I do of like my grandma's family who I was super close to, but I just, you know, because, um, so much of their stuff was left behind in this house, um, and because my grandma's stuff got divided up between kids and grandkids, you know, long ago, it just doesn't, it's not all with one person. So anyway, I went off of her little Edwardian, I'm sorry, Freddie, my kitty is, is um, climbing around at the base of the tripod. So that's the wiggling, but I was going off of this and I, what's interesting is when you look at black, this is not a new idea, but sometimes you don't think about it. I don't think about it. So I was like, oh, this is a white dress. And I think a lot of them were white. I think white was a very um, common popular color in, in like the 19 hundreds and 19 teens um but I'm not sure if the sash and the bow would have been white or if they might have been kind of a pastel shade um so I was I don't know I kind of took some license and I made mine blue for this little mouse but I'm I could still go back but I don't know if I will um and I haven't decided how I'm gonna draw or paint in the detail but there's her little bow and I did give her I I've given one other mouse shoes, so this was my second time trying shoes. I gave her some little um, Mary Janes, and I think they turned out actually really cute. So I'm I'm happy with this little mousey, and I think she's gonna have a doll. Um, let me see. I've got too many things sitting here, um, and they all kind of get in the way. But I was gonna give her this little dolly, but I've got to touch up a little bit because I tried to paint her face when it was too wet and the eye bled out so I which sounds very um like a really bad accident but it's just that the paint was wet and so she's got kind of a she's got kind of a bad eye there so I'm going to touch up this little dolly and then I think what I'll make for you is for this mama who I also tried to give kind of an Edwardian style outfit and this is from um, a child's dress that Hilda had saved, which is actually, like, I think it's too far away for me to grab. Um, but it was very faded, and it looked like pink stripe, which I thought was beautiful. It was a very pale 
um, kind of like a conch shell, if you know what I mean, or abalone shell um, pink. But when I turned out the inside of it, because it had been hemmed up a couple times, um, or you know how you can kind of do like you can take it up, but it's not like a permanent hem. Um, anyway, the inside of the hem was more of this red, so that was the original color of the dress before it had been worn and and probably just faded from washing and from sun. Um, and then I, so anyway, yeah, all of the fabrics or all the textiles are from her stashes that I kind of go through. And so this mama needs a little baby. I'm looking here for some tiny, tiny trim for the top. Like I like to use parts of lace trim for collars. Um, I have a little doll that has, she's got a cotton, like an actual spun cotton dress, um, but I want a tiny bit of trim to kind of set off the collar. Um, so I'm going through one of my trim baskets. Um, I recorded a voiceover, worked on it yesterday, um, and then I, I don't know, I, I had a lot of trouble sleeping last night. I just kept thinking of it and feeling like it really didn't talk about what I really wanted to talk about with you and it part of it I think was that this um, is not a very long video and I felt um, I felt rushed to say or to get to the things I wanted to um, so I just need to recognize that I'm not going to get to all the things but um, what I wanted to say here's little this so this is the one that I made to look more like a doll as opposed to a baby um, and that's for the little Hilda mouse. Um, what I wanted to say was, and I, I think I had trouble sleeping for many reasons, and I, I'm sure that many of you can relate to that. Um, I turned 40, 40, I guess, or I will, <laughs> I suppose if I went by like the hour I was birthed, um, I'm not 40 yet, but I will be 40 in a few hours. Um, so it's my birthday. It's a kind of a big one if you go by numbers. Um, I don't think that number is so important or I'm trying to tell myself it isn't. Um, I think what's been a bigger thing is that within the last few years, I do feel um, a big shift in my, and notice um, things that tell me my hormones are shifting and changing. Um, and that's early, but it's not, you know, it's not um, earlier than what other women experienced sort of their first symptoms of perimenopause. Um, and it's, it's not unusual in my family because um, we do go through menopause earlier and um, we start menstruating earlier. And I, I may go into my whole story with that sometime, but this wouldn't be the video because it's so short. Um, but I, I am definitely in a transitional time and I'm sure I'm not experiencing um, the really big part of it yet, but there are things that are different. Sorry about that. Um, the dogs think that they hear something out on the porch, but I'm not going to let them out because they will then bark loud enough that they'll bark through this entire um, little video. Um, so anyway, I know that that has been contributing to my anxiety. Um, I know that probably I'm having some of the things like um, higher cortisol levels um, and just different stuff like that. And I know that my anxiety is worse different times of the month. Um, and I'm not going to go into that a lot. I'm just going to say that I definitely um, sympathize with anyone who is going through that or did go through that at some point. Um, it's, um, it's definitely a challenge, an added challenge at this point in your life. I don't I'm trying not to um, get really, you know, because there's a lot more discussion about it. And of course, that's good because there is more discussion about things we can do to help during the transition and ease the transition or make um, things better, make our bodies work for us and, and minds too, I mean, in, in a, a healthier way. Um, so that's good, but you know, there's a lot out there that can kind of flip you out and make you feel like this is a really dreadful, 
horrible um, thing that we have to <laughs> potentially be going through for like 10 years um, before we maybe come out the other side and start to adjust to whatever that new normal is. So I, I don't want to think about um, it as just like the worst. Um, I'm trying to think that there can be some good things about it. Um, but you know, it's, it's just change and that's always hard. Um, so I've got this little baby going. These are so fiddly. Wrapping the legs takes forever. I mean, that's the thing about small things is a lot of times, um, someone sees, you know, a little miniature thing and it's, they love it. It's cute, but it's like, you feel like it shouldn't, um, if you're buying it, you feel like it shouldn't cost as much as a full size thing. But like the sad reality, at least with these little mice is that they can sometimes take longer than a big mouse just because they're so fiddly. And that is why, um, I do usually put little dresses on them. I'm trying, I've, I've made five or six now, I think, and I'm trying to find ways um, to simplify the process and still make them cute, but I haven't found a way to not have to wrap the tiny, tiny arms and legs and tail, and that's what just ends up taking forever. Also, it does take quite a while to get ears that look decent, um, but that that's, I don't know, that's kind of the world of miniatures, and um and making things to sell, which I mean, I, I think I mentioned this is my first sale art sale this year. I'm, I mean, I've had the supply kit for sale and I have cards in the shop, but I haven't made any art because it just, um, has felt like too much for one thing. Um, I've really, really struggled to find extra time to do that because, um, because I was already squeezed by the other things in my life, which are um, the animal sanctuary and then um, taking over as Nettie's primary um, homeschool teacher this year from my mom with it. So I'm doing the bulk of homeschooling this year, except math, which my sister does, and she does a great job with that. Um, but there's so there's a lot more time going into um, our school day together. Um, and then there's the animals, which take um, usually a few hours each day for care and chore time. And then we do have a lot of um, home renovations happening, way more than what I ever get to. Like they are just dragging on and on and on. Um, so there's all of that stuff going on and it's easy to just let the art um, get pushed back. And because I've been making YouTube videos a priority, that's also given me much less time um, to actually make my own pieces, um, whatever that would be. It could be spun cotton to sell, or um, I would love to have time to work on painting and illustration and um, even some kind of ideas for um, kind of illustrated books that I've, I've wanted to work on for a long time, but that is so hard to prioritize in particular because there would be no return from it. Um, and I feel like at this point, I, I'm still kind of tied to making things that can support the animals in some way. So um, that's kind of where I am. I am I'm nervous about this sale because when you haven't sold anything in a year, you wonder, like, um, are people still there for that? I know that there are lots of you here um, and you're here for the making and all of that, but I'm not sure if I have an audience um, for selling or for buying right now. So I'm, I'm kind of, that may be another reason I'm not sleeping super well. Um, but, um, and I'm, I'm thinking too of my sweet grandma who passed away a year and a half ago. And over the weekend, it marked her 100th birthday. And we share birthdays, you know, be almost it's just a few days between them um so we always celebrated together um so i just been thinking of that and wishing that we were going to have our uncle max's chocolate cake together which was her favorite um kind of family chocolate cake recipe that um she made and um it's not what i ask for now uh, but I sure do miss it. And she made the best, um, chocolate frosting. It's so funny. 
um, she would give us the recipe and we would make it and it wouldn't taste like hers. And she would just say, oh, I don't know why. What are you, you what? And she'd ask, you know, what did you do this? Did you put in that? And we'd say, yeah, we did all those things. And it took years. I mean, it was years of just asking again, well, could, maybe we didn't, you know, maybe we didn't get one of the ingredients. And then I think it was my mom who, I don't know if she just thought of it one day or if she was actually there when grandma was making the frosting, but she um, made it, it would say milk um, in the frosting. And <laughs> she realized grandma was making it with coffee mate. Uh, grandma was a huge uh, coffee mate fan. I mean, she, and she called it mate. She'd always have it on her grocery list, mate. Make sure you get mate. I'm out of mate. And I, mom was convinced for a while she was putting it on her cereal. <laughs> like, <laughs> anyway, it's terrible. Uh, I love to think of that. Um, so all of you who um, have been hearing terrible things about coffee mate and what it has in it, uh, well, I don't know. Grandma drank it like religiously um, and happily for many, many, many years and lived to be 98 and a half. So uh, the, I don't know. There's exceptions to every rule. It probably won't kill you. And if you enjoy it, maybe, maybe just go ahead and keep drinking it. And also, hey, try it in your frosting. If you're not afraid of coffee, mate, put a splash in your frosting and see what it does. <laughs> Uh, it was the secret ingredient in our chocolate cake frosting recipe for many years. Um, so anyway, I don't know. This was an interesting voiceover. We'll see if I ended up liking it better than the original one. And I had fun chatting with all of you, and I appreciate you so much. I'm learning a lot being here um, and having you um, to kind of make with me and be this little community of people who are wanting to learn new things um, and feel kind of creatively empowered and discover that you might have more capabilities than what you realize. So anyway, I do appreciate you so much and I thank you for being here. I hope that I continue to um, make things that are valuable, make videos or content or whatever you want to call it that are valuable to you. And so just continue to let me know how I'm doing. Um, so here's little baby. So this is the one I wanted to look more like a baby. Um, and she does she's tiny enough that she does fit in mama's short little arms and I ended up giving her the little fabric trim dress because I thought that matched better since mama had um, a cloth outfit um, and I was thinking of the book baby dear um, by Eloise Wilkins so maybe look that up because I bet a lot of you will remember that that's what these <laughs> little dollies and the baby remind me of is his little girl with her dolly and mama with her baby and the little girl does um, all the things with her dolly that mama does with baby but anyway the little girl calls her dolly baby dear and it's a super sweet little book um, anyway thank you for being here and making with me and I will see you soon happy making